about five to seven and I've got to work. <laughs> in the Navy almost 30 years now and I've spent probably literally about 15 years underwater in submarines. It's the start of a typical working day for the people who build Britain's nuclear submarines. There is a lot of people that I know that work in the yard. Obviously there's Jed, husband. My sister-in-law works in there, my brother-in-law works in there, my brother works in there. I would say every family that I know, at least one or two people actually work in the yard. Barrow in Furness is a town of 62,000 people on the edge of the English Lake District. The town has an amazing history of building submarines, launching its first in 1887. It only takes me about 10 minutes, if that, to get to work. And generations of the same families from all around the area still build them today. I'm just swiping on. This is like electronic timekeeping. Make sure we're in at the right time and not late. <laughs> The capability of our submarines is something that we want to keep to ourselves because if other countries, other organisations know the capability of the units which we operate, then they can develop ways of defeating that capability. So that's why we're very careful about uh, who comes on this site and also what information we're allowed to give as well. The current owner of the shipyard is British defence company BAE Systems. The business employs over 35,000 people across the UK, with around 5,000 of them in Barrow alone. BAE Systems is not without its critics, but in this town, the company forms the very backbone of the local economy. We have extraordinary numbers of people working here with all sorts of family relationships, and, and the business has a real family feel to it as well. We play a very vital part in the community. There's a, a lot of um, salaries and, and, and money goes back into the community through our shipyard. Britain's need for submarines splits opinion. Some think they're critical for defence, others that they're a waste of taxpayers' money. But with a potential order book of seven astute submarines, Barrow depends on them to prosper into the next decade and beyond. This is the only site in the UK where we design, build, test and commission uh, nuclear submarines uh, for the Royal Navy. Britain's current fleet of attack submarines are coming to the end of their working lives. And the Royal Navy are desperate to get their hands on this new class. One of the world's most technologically advanced machines, they pack weaponry, life support and all the sensitive equipment a submarine needs to operate, including a nuclear reactor that will power its engine for 25 years and never need refueling. At almost a billion pounds, this submarine doesn't come cheaply or quickly. The submarines take years to manufacture, but what we do have on site here are four submarines in various stages of their build. The first one is afloat outside the Devonshire Dock Hall. The second submarine is behind me. Uh, the third submarine is just about whole. Uh, we've got a few more units to, to weld together. And the fourth submarine is at the moment in, uh, in a series of, of units being outfitted. So you can look around the site here and see from first rolling the steel to actually operating the systems and preparing to go to sea. Building four boats with a staggered production schedule the range of skills needed on site is extraordinary. The people here are unique in not only what they do, but how they do it. Uh, I'm just changing into my overalls. You have to wear them, obviously. Don't cut yourself or hurt yourself. But uh, they're not very flattering, to say the least. I work on that boat, boat two, ambush. This one closer to us is boat three. We're going down there to the toolbox talk. 
nice team leader. On a night. Erin Brown will be trained in the electrical systems of the submarine and as one of only 300 electricians on the build, when she's qualified, she'll be part of a very elite and highly skilled club. That was our toolbox talk. We have one every morning at half past seven, uh, telling us any health and safety issues from the day before, any communications, basically keeping us in touch with what's going on around the yard. The whole site covers 169 acres, making it Britain's biggest shipyard. And as a hub of high technology, nuclear submarines aren't just built in Barrow, they're designed here too. The submarine is designed to operate in a very hostile environment, which is under the sea, at pressure. Um, it's a salty environment, it wants to corrode, and at the same time it has to keep its crew of 97 crew um, safe for about a three-month period without surfacing. So it has to make its own air, make its own water, carries its own food, um, and it has to also operate as a warfighting machine as well. The submarine has to be able to withstand underwater strikes and explosions, and so computer simulations put the hull through extreme testing to ensure it will keep its crew safe if attacked. With around 600 people involved in the design process alone, this is one of the largest concentrations of such expertise in the world. It's the most complex submarine we've ever built. It's got sort of like a quarter of a million uh, miles worth of cable on board the boat. It's got something like about 25,000 valves. We have to produce more than 100,000 drawings. So all the drawings originate from our computer-aided model. It took four years to design the Astute, which will contain more than a million individual components, designed on a computer, but built by hand. My job is a steel work team leader. Started off as a shipwright in 1982 and worked my way through the business. I've been in this shop now for about 12 years. And this is the place where all the submarines start out life. This is where the raw plates come in by road. The wagons back into the shop. The magnet crane removes them and puts them into the piles. Using a plasma cutting machine, each plate has carefully designed patterns burnt into them. When each plate comes off the burning machine, what we do, we leave a small stitch of metal, which stops all the individual pieces falling out on the floor. Peter, the burner, what he's doing now, is cutting through all the little stitches so the piece parts will fall out. They all go where they need to be to be built in the right time, just like a massive airfix model. The steel that makes the hull is shaped and rolled until the massive sections are completed. Peel away the special coating and the pressure hull is simply a watertight tube capped at both ends with tanks that fill with water to help it dive and surface. And finally, there's a fin section on top. The hull is made of eight separate steel sections, each around 11 metres in diameter. The boat is 97 metres long and, when finished, weighs 7,400 tonnes. The huge sections are made in a different part of the yard and, when completed, need to be transported down a public road to the building where the vessel is actually put together. At 260 metres long, 58 metres wide and 51 metres tall, this building is one of Britain's biggest sheds. This is the DDH, which stands for Devonshire Dock Hall. The submarines are built in here because it's where all the top secret stuff is, where people can't see, so it's, it's housed and it's hidden. It's where the magic happens, I suppose. The 
Jute is the first class of British submarine in which sections are worked on vertically. This allows easy access for the team before the section is turned the right way up or shipwise. Right, what we've got is a unit like this and we'll lower it down till it's on its two turning shoes at the far end there. What we'll then do is rig Frank up to the shock crane up here and we'll start turning it over like this so it's rolling on, on the two turning shoes. Just a second set of eyes, just to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Because I'm the appointed person, if anything goes wrong, it's me that gets you in the neck. We're at a critical stage now, this turn, where we've transferred the weight of the unit onto the mobile crane. The mobile crane is um, holding the load. We're now going to de-rig the shock crane and re-rig it onto these eye plates on this lower side of the unit. It's a critical point now, if either of these two cranes fail, um, well, I wouldn't like to be standing here, that's, I'll put it that way. A submarine packs in three times more machinery and equipment than any surface ship. But most of the back of the boat is taken up with the nuclear reactor, the engine and all the different backup systems. We're now in the diesel generator space. Should we lose the reactor at sea, then we would rely on these diesel engines to provide uh, the electrical power for running the minimum of equipment that we need to live as human beings. If you really need them at sea, then it's a, it's a bad hair day and uh, you've got some problems, yeah. For a submarine to operate effectively, it has to be virtually undetectable. To do this, machinery is isolated from shocks, noise and vibration. This mounting here is an example of how you decouple the noise or the vibration generated from the diesel engine here from a, a sensitive piece of equipment. So this is basically you can see here that this allows this piece of equipment to move. We expect the astute class to be one of the, or if not the quietest submarine in the world. And one of the reasons for that is of course the technology we employ on here to prevent the vibration being transmitted to the hull. Today,